welcome back to Glendale Cemetery in Akron, Ohio. In our first Glendale video, we visited the final resting places of some very prominent people of this Northeast Ohio city, as well as some unique individuals with amazing tales of their own. If you haven't watched that video, we'll leave a link to it in the description below. In today's video, we continue our quest to visit the graves of the historical figures who helped build and expand this city two graves whose occupants witnessed the greatest disaster of the 20th century, and one grave of an actor whose minor role garnered a standing ovation as he rubs shoulders with an assassin's brother. So, if you're curious, let's take a walk through history. Ohio Columbus Barber was an American businessman, industrialist, and philanthropist. His father made matches by hand, which his son sold door to door. O.C. received a common school education, and at the age of 15, began working for his father. At age 16, O.C. Barber became the company salesman. At 20, he was partner in the business, and by 21, he was the general manager. Eventually, he'd be known as America's Match King because of his controlling interest in the Diamond Match Company, which had 85% of the market in 1881. He founded the city of Barberton, Ohio in 1891 and moved his manufacturing plant there in 1894. It produced 250 million matches per day. He also founded Akron City Hospital in 1904 and in 1906, he founded the Akron Chamber of Commerce. In 1905, he began his last project to create a scientific farm. Barber had 35 structures built as part of his experiment, Scientific Anna Dean Farm, which covered 3,500 acres. He named it after his daughter, Anna, and her husband, Dr. Arthur Dean Bevan. Built in the French Renaissance revival style, he believed farm buildings should be both beautiful and functional. He intended to have a farm that operated as efficiently as industry. Many of his facilities were the largest in the world at the time, such as the greenhouses covering 12 acres, the largest barn in the world, 750 feet long, 40 feet wide, three stories high, and the Bruder Barns incubator, where he raised 50,000 chickens, which were allowed free range. In 1920, Barber died at his mansion in Barberton. He willed his farm to Case Western Reserve University, intending it to serve as the basis of an agricultural college, but he failed to complete the financing before his death. Since neither his widow nor the university was able to operate the farm, the university sold most of the property. Simon Perkins was born as the third generation of the Simon Perkinses in 1815 in Warren, Ohio. He married Grace Todd in 1835, and two years later, they moved to Akron, Ohio, into a large stone mansion built for him and his bride by his father. That house and the grounds known as the Perkins Stone Mansion is open to the public and is the current home of the Summit County Historical Society. Simon established himself in the sheep and cattle breeding business on a farm south of his home on Copley Hill. As a supplement to this business, he built a not too successful woolen mill on the Ohio Canal in Akron. In 1843, he entered into a sheep raising partnership with John Brown, the abolitionist of Harper's Ferry fame. In the wool deal gone bad, Brown's actions were said to have cost Perkins $40,000. The partnership was dissolved and John Brown moved to the Adirondacks to brood over slavery. Simon Perkins also entered the railroad business. He organized a company and built a connecting rail from Hudson, Ohio to Akron and then on to Columbus. 
Oddly enough, this was the same rail that the doodle bug disaster in Cuyahoga Falls occurred on. The first train ran on July 4th, 1852. Unfortunately, like other business ventures of his, this too got into financial difficulties, and in 1866 it was sold. Simon remained as superintendent for six years, after which he retired. Simon served in both houses of the Ohio legislature. He was instrumental in building Glendale Cemetery and served 41 years as president of the Cemetery Association. During the Civil War, he rose to the rank of Colonel and was at one time the Assistant Quartermaster General in the Army of the Cumberland. By the way, Simon and Grace had 13 children. He died in 1887 at the age of 82. This is the grave of Ellen Wilkes, who was born as Ellen Needs in Tresco in the Scilly Isles of Cornwall, England, on June 13, 1864. She was the daughter of George Needs and Ann Pender. Ellen was married in Penzance in 1888 to William John Wilkes, and the couple had a son, William James, the previous year. The marriage didn't last long. Looking for a better life, she embarked on the Titanic at Southampton and traveled third class, her ticket costing seven pounds. She was traveling to Akron, Ohio to the address of her nephew, Sidney Hawking, who had emigrated the previous year. Also traveling with her, albeit in second class, were her sister, Eliza Hawking, Eliza's son, George, two daughters, Ellen and Emily, and Emily's two sons. Ellen was rescued on lifeboat 16. Her sisters, nieces, and great nephews were rescued in lifeboat four. Ellen was reunited with family in New York and finally arrived in Akron, Ohio, where she spent the rest of her life. She was joined later by her son, William, and his family, whom she lived with until William's death on May 31st, 1947. In Ellen's final years, she became a recluse was discovered by neighbors in February 1955, living in squalor at her home in Akron. She was without heat or running water in the middle of the winter. Although her home had furniture, she'd been sleeping, sitting upright in a chair in her living room. She was taken to Akron City Hospital, suffering severely from frostbite, and a partial amputation on her feet was performed. She remained at the hospital until her death on April 27th, 1955. She's buried here next to her son. Ellen's sister Elizabeth was born Eliza Needs in Tresco. She was the second daughter of George Needs and Ann Pender. She married William Hawking in 1884 and the couple had seven children. Sons Sidney and George later moved to America in the early 1900s and lived in Akron, Ohio. Sometime after her husband died, Elizabeth married William Guy. And Mr. Guy abused Elizabeth, and after his death, she took back the name Hawking. She decided to join her sons in the United States, so George traveled back to England to bring her and several others to America. They were to set sail on the Oceanic, but because of a coal strike, they were switched to the Titanic and booked into second class. Elizabeth, two daughters, and two grandsons were rescued in lifeboat number four. Her son, George, went down with the ship. Eliza was met in New York by her other son, Sidney, who had come from Akron. Elizabeth lived in Akron for two years at 195 Gale Street. Then on the evening of April 14, 1914, Dr. C.E. Norris and C.W. Milliken found Elizabeth laying in the middle of East Market Street in front of Akron City Hospital. She had a very bad head wound and other injuries. She died at 5 a.m. on April 15, 1914 the two-year anniversary of the sinking of the Titanic and the death of her son, George. The cause of death was eventually ruled hit by car or streetcar, but for a time, officers thought it was maybe a mugging. 
Liza was on her way to visit her daughter. It was said forevermore that Eliza Hawking could cross the Atlantic and cheat Titanic's icy death. But she couldn't cross the street in Akron, Ohio. Frank Augustus F.A. Cyberling was born on October 6, 1859 in Norton, Ohio, the second of nine children to John Frederick and Catherine Miller Cyberling. The Cyberling family moved to Akron in 1865 where F.A. attended public school before enrolling in Heidelberg College in 1874. He remained in college for two years before joining his father at the J.F. Cyberling & Company a manufacturer of agricultural machinery. On October 12, 1887, F.A. married Gertrude Penfield. The couple resided in Akron and had seven children, six of whom lived to adulthood. In 1898, F.A. co-founded the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company with his brother Charles C.W. Cyberling. He began his career as the director and became president in 1906. By 1916, Goodyear was the world's largest tire producer. During his tenure, F.A. received several patents for significant improvements to tire design and manufacturing, including co-inventing the Cyberling State Tire Machine, which revolutionized how tires were manufactured. During his lifetime, F.A. used his fortune and influence to create fair housing, build a hospital, improve transportation both locally and nationally, preserve green space for the community's enjoyment, and fund countless arts and culture programs and organizations. F.A. believed true prosperity was gained through the enlightenment and improvement of everyday citizens. F.A. focused on projects that directly impacted the lives of his Goodyear employees and thereby ensured the success of Akron. He developed and underwrote the development of Goodyear Heights a neighborhood for factory workers, and Fairlawn Heights, a neighborhood for white collar employees. In addition, he was founder of the People's Hospital, now Cleveland Clinic Akron General, the Fairlawn Country Club, and the Metropolitan Park System in Akron, now Summit Metro Parks. F.A. also supported four educational institutions, his alma mater Heidelberg College, the University of Akron, Lincoln Memorial University in Cumberland Gap, Tennessee, and the Western Reserve Academy, a private boys' school in Hudson, Ohio. In 1921, during a financial reorganization, he stepped down as president of Goodyear. And six months later, he co-founded the Cyberling Rubber Company with his brother C.W. He served as president until 1938. F.A. then became chairman of the board until 1950, when he retired at the age of 90. F.A. Cyberling died from pneumonia on August 12, 1955, at the People's Hospital. Acclaimed actor Edwin Booth who remained a theatrical luminary despite being the brother of presidential assassin John Wilkes Booth, was nearly upstaged during an 1882 production of Hamlet. In the title role, Booth was waiting backstage to deliver the famous to be or not to be soliloquy when he heard a roar from the audience. Patrons had recognized Akron actor Newton Chisnell in the lowly role of a gravedigger and cheered for him as if Shakespeare himself had walked on stage. Momentarily confused, Booth regained his composure, delivered the speech with fervor, and invited Chisnell to take a bow. One of Akron's greatest landmarks is easy to overlook. Tall trees and thick bushes obscure a beautiful stone structure that dates back to the Victorian era. Construction began in August 1883 on the 60-foot bell tower at Ordnance Hill. 
The bell tower was meant to complement the Civil War Memorial Chapel. While the Gothic Chapel's construction cost $25,000, it's more than 650,000 in today's money. The stone tower only cost 1,000, roughly 27 grand today. The Ladies Cemetery Association donated the money to construct the tower after purchasing a 700 pound bell in 1880. Akron architect Frank O'Weary, who designed the chapel, led the bell tower project, and Akron builder Alfred W. Barnes, a stonemason, served as the general contractor. Now, Barnes went around in circles, carefully mortaring hand-cut stones as the tower rose. The upward spiral took nearly three months to complete. In early November, the heavy bell was lifted into position, but there was no elaborate ceremony to mark the occasion. In fact, citizens didn't know the tower was working until they heard the bell's deep reverberations. The magnificent tone echoed across the canal town of cereal mills and reaper factories. It became a familiar sound throughout the community. Every day at 6 p.m., a caretaker climbed the hill, entered the tower, and pulled a rope. The loud peal signaled the closing of the iron gates at the cemetery. More significantly, the bell rang for every funeral procession at the cemetery in the late 1800s. Many of Akron's pioneers were laid to rest as the bell slowly sounded. The bell fell silent in the early 20th century except for special commemorations such as the end of World War I. Trees and bushes grew around the stone tower, making the hill nearly impassable. Cemetery trustees revived the bell ringing custom in 1930 with the installation of an electronically operated system. Workers connected wires from the belfry to the superintendent's office. And the bell continued to operate for years. It told with joy in 1945 as Akron residents celebrated the end of World War II and it might still be ringing today if it hadn't been for the thoughtless actions of vandals who broke into the tower, climbed its spiral staircase and stole the bell's clapper. A cemetery crew sealed off the entrance to prevent further trespassers. And although the tower is on the National Register of Historic Places, it's easy for Glendale visitors to overlook. The chapel, also on the register, draws the most attention, while the bell tower peeks shyly from behind the trees. Thank you for joining us today, folks. Remember, if you missed part one, there's a link to it in the description. So I hope you liked this walk through the famous graves of Akron, Ohio's past. If you'd like to see more famous grave tours, please tell us in the comments. Also, the links to our Patreon and our merch store are in the description below, as well as all our social media accounts. And if you would, please like, subscribe, leave a comment, click the notification bell, and share this video. I would certainly appreciate the support. All right, and we'll see you next time as we explore more curious history. Take care.